flowers and things. And, and, and to mankind, it's really, well, the same with the gospel men of God and preachers. And to God, you just a fragrant of sweet Savior. The minister that, uh, to God, the minister is, uh, he's uh, acceptable unto God. Now, I'm talking about sincere. I'm talking about ministers of God. They, they, you know, they, 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 they satisfy God and, and, and not only that they worth paying attention to because they are God's flagrant. And then not only that, they, they, they are pleasing and, and they fulfill, it's an awesome responsibility to tell people that you are, you are saved and you are perishing. You know, that takes a, a, a notice out of a person. You got to let folk know that they can be saved in eternal life with Christ. Uh, they are on their way without Christ. The minister is precious, very precious to God, but he understands the wings of God, eternal love. God cares for his minister. I, you be careful. I tell people all the time, you be careful how you treat God's minister. You know, I know the Church of Christ is right because... If anybody going to starve, it's going to be a Church of Christ preacher. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> but to God, God, with the Bible says, God will take care of us. Listen to what he said in 1 Timothy. The Bible tells in 1 Timothy 1 and 12. And he said, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me for they have what? Counted me faithful and put me where? In the ministry. See, this is God doing, not, not, not your doing. I can't understand why we find so many preachers that belong to the Lord. I told my girl, you can't find me, you might dismiss me, but you can't find me because I work for the Lord. <laughs> you know, and so we find this out that they make the minister a sweet flavor to God. In fact, the minister, uh, he spread the knowledge of, of Christ to the world and to us. And that's, and that's what makes us smell so good. I know you don't let me brag on preachers, but I happen to be one. I learn to brag on myself. But anyway, <laughs> you, you know, and uh, uh, the minister, he say, he represents the life that is in Christ Jesus. Now, he's representing something. He got to live that which he preached. Yeah? Oh, y'all didn't hear me that. We got to learn that as ministers, we got to live that which we preach. And not only we got to preach that which God have commanded us. If you want to be a savior that represents God. The minister spread the fragrance of life unto life and death unto death. That the people are dead to God now and shall be eternally dead to God if they refuse the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just think about that. Listen to what he said here in the first. He said, but we are unto God a sweet Savior in them that are saved. Y'all love your minister telling you the truth. We're going to get down to that because we're going to get down to some of them people to smell another way. But we, we ain't going to get back, you know, we ain't going to go off in there. See, just imagine being responsible for the message of God and determining life and death for people. That's why we need to get out, uh, keep our philosophy out of it. I went to a church, and you know, we don't need to tell story. We need to tell truth. <laughs> you know, they got all, you know, get away from the philosophy. Listen what the Bible tells. A qualified man does not corrupt the word of God. If you want a, a sweet smelling flavor, the effect of the gospel, you must be qualified, a man, and stop and do not corrupt God's word. What do you mean by corrupt? It means to mix up things into the gospel. For example, a person, uh, your personal ideas. You know, people ask me one time, they said, something wrong with you. They said, what do you mean? They say, they ask me, well, what do you think about us? I don't. They say, are you ignorant? Yeah. <laughs> they say, what do you think about what this scripture says? Whatever God says, what I think. You know, I, I mean, one time, don't tell nobody I told y'all that. But one gay asked me one time, uh, you know, you're on a job, you can't tell them how they are. But he, he said, oh, well, you know, they know. He said, what, what do you think about gays? I said, what do God think about them? <laughs> and I just walked off. <laughs> what do God, but anyway, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said in Matthew 22 and 9, the Bible said, Jesus answered and said unto them, you do error. Not knowing the scripture and the what? The power of God. 
You see, when we, when, when, when we, when we are a minister and we keep preaching what God tells us to preach, we, we got power. And that smell good to God. When you go, when you continue in his word, listen to what he said in, in 2 Corinthians 4. And, so I hope I ain't getting on anybody's stuff, but let's go to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter and verse number 2. The Bible tells us something. If anybody, can you read that right now? But we have renounced. He said we have renounced what? The hidden things. The of dishonesty. hidden things of what? Dishonesty. The, of dishonesty. You see, preacher, you got to deal with dishonesty in your church. Not all in the world. What else did he say there? Not walking in crap. He said, oh, you're going to be slick. Wait a minute. He's eloquent in his speaking. I mean, he's well, he got all his greases. And, he, and, he, and he's eloquent. Oh, man, he can, he can set you up. God said, don't be crafted. See, someone's just been crafted by false teachers. Read. Nor handling the word of God. He said, don't what don't worry, don't how God wear what? Deceitfully. Deceitfully. Oh, sound like somebody been doing that, brother. With, huh? He said, Don't you have go see as a preacher, if you want to keep that fragrant from God and God love you, you don't how God wear deceitfully. Read. But by manifestation. He said, No, by manifestation and what else? And what? Of the truth. Of the truth. The other way, hold it. You just stay on the truth in spite of them. What else he said there? Commending ourselves. He said commend ourselves what? By every man's conscience uh -huh. in the sight of God. Just work on their conscience, but it got to be, see, I'm going to tell you later on, preachers, don't tell them. Don't, we don't let them get outside the wall, but God is watching us. We're being watched. He said, in the sight of God, thank you, brother, qualified man is sincere. If the minister is he, he's unstained, he, uh, you know, he untainted, you, we talking about the effect of the gospel. The number one thing is we do not contaminate you know, God's word. We don't contaminate it. Not only that, the minister that I tell you when he speak, uh, despite whatever going on, he still, see, some of us like to compromise. Well, I just need to get along. No, you need to get along with God. See, oh, I want to get along. I want to get along with everybody, but if it's outside of God, I don't need to get along with him. I need to get along with God. Listen to what the Bible said in Philippians 1 and 10, that you may approve what? Things that are excellent, that you may be what? Sincere without offense till what? Till the day of Christ, till you die. You know, some of you get my age and... And brother, if they think you both just get, sit down and get you a wheelchair, but God said, "You this is you got to do this under death." Let's talk about something else here. Let's let's deal with the smell of death, just for a minute too. The message of Christ is either life or death to a person. I want to say it again: Christ is life and death. You know, you know, the world want to tell you how great and how all the good things about God and all things are good about God, but they, they just want to stick to what God do for them. But we got, we got to understand that there is death. Listen to what he said in, 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 uh, in, in all that Christ is love and the light of, of the world and hate as the light of condemnation. What are you talking about? Listen to what he said. Let's, let us go to uh, 1 Peter 2, 7 and 8. Watch what he's saying here. But before we go there, you know, we always like not John 9, uh, 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 316. John 316. But we're not going to deal with 316. Let's deal with 19 and 20. Listen to what the Bible tells us in John 19, uh, um, 3, 19 and 20. What did it say there? For this is what? The condemnation that light has come, come into the world. Let me tell you, brother, we are in a situation and it's getting worse and worse and worse. You know, we thought uh, uh, phones, uh, cell phones and computer was a beauty, but watch what happened. He said, this is the condemnation, they said that the light is coming to the world. And men love and God. And men love God. This is death, y'all. They love God. They love God. What else they do? Rather than light. They rather, see, it's easy to get somebody 
You know, if you throw the party here, like where well, the point I'm talking about, you get a lot more folks than this. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Hey, uh, <laughs> what did y'all do on watching 4th of July get here? Juneteenth. Some of you went way down to Walter Hattie. You know, you colored. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the Bible tells us that, you know, we love darkness rather what? than light. Rather, we love to be the devil than be Christ. They have the Christ. Who they want? Do they want the robbers or did they want Jesus? Oh, man, we love darkness. We, you know, we don't know because, what else he said there? Because that deeds were he said, he said, you know why you love darkness? You know why they love us? Because they just want to do what they want to do and what they want to do. Every imagination of man is evil. They hate the light. What else they do? And everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. You know what you do. When you sin and when you practice sin, you know you hate the light. Now people say, well, I don't hate Jesus. Well, Jesus is the light. We ain't going to stop right there. Thank you, brother. You remember what Peter said? In 1 Peter, the uh, second chapter, he said, You therefore which believe, he is precious. I want you, we're going to deal with a stone in a minute. He said, you are precious. But to them be disobedient, the stone, I want you, I want you to uh, underline this, the stone with the building disallowed, the same became what? Watch what he's saying there. Well, hold it, hold it, brother. Disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed. What I'm saying is, unbelief disqualify the stone. We, see, we disqualify the stone in our lives in spite that we can't do nothing about the stone. But watch what else he's saying here. He said, the, he said, not only that, in verse 8, here's what happened to the world. I, I, I remember when I was a young man, and I couldn't understand these scriptures uh, like this because, you know, I found out one thing as I grew up. The scripture that I didn't want to do, I had a hard time. The rest of them I could understand, you know, when talking about somebody else. <laughs> but watch what the Bible says in verse 8. What does it say? And a stone of stumble. He said, A stone of stumble and a rock, and a rock of offense to what? Even to them. Even to them. Which stumble uh -huh. at the word. Watch out. I told you I only stumbled at the word I didn't want to do. You know, you know, like, a, you know, go to worship every Sunday and. Every Wednesday night and go out and teach Bible class. I got to sit there while somebody trying to baptize somebody else. I mean, I've got excuse for that. I went yesterday. Yeah, we got, you know we do that. How much they want for me? No, Ed, how much do Christ want for you? Watch what happened. Thank you, brother. He said, not only that a stone or stumbling. What are you talking about? You're talking about the unbelief. We're talking about the lost. We're talking about the unsaved people. That You know, unbelief are a picture of disobedience of the builder, Christ Jesus. When you stumble, you're stumbling at Christ. You're disallowing Christ in your life. Do not, do not want the stone, which is Christ. They do not think that the stone will fit with their plan. Otherwise, we all got plans, and Jesus just don't, can't fit in there. Well, yeah, we, we don't miss church because uh, 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 we want to, we, because we don't want Jesus' plan in our lives. Our plan is more important than Jesus' plan. Oh, we're talking about the unbeliever. We're talking about the, the smell of death. All you're doing is killing you. You stumble and you're falling. Not only that, do not believe the stone of Christ is suitable for what? For our building. See, God, you know, Greeks don't know what we want to do. He's so, so he, his building don't suit us. Going to, going to worship don't suit us. Serving God don't do it. Giving all I have to Christ doesn't suit me. We do not believe the stone of Christ is worthy of the price. I just can't do that for the church. 
You know, I don't know how many members you got here. I don't know how many you got anywhere. But if you can get 10% of them doing what God wants you to do, you're in good shape. But undoubtedly, we, we have that problem. We have that problem. Christ make the head of the cornerstone anyway. You can't stop Jesus. He's the head of the cornerstone. He's, uh, he's unbelievable over the stone. You stumble over Christ. Not Christ. You stumbling over the word of God. Stumbling means that we have tripped up. We're damaging ourselves. Listen to what the Bible says. To offend men, we hurt ourselves when we don't know how we belong to Christ. Let me, let me run this by you. The word of God is the only incorruptible seed in the world. I don't care what you did, what, what philosophy you come up with, it, the word of God is the only word is incorruptible. Incorruptible, I'm sorry. But the unbelief can become harder and harder to the gospel. The more you, the, the harder you get, the more you miss. I tell people all the time, if you can come to worship just five straight times and all the time, you might increase, but you I said, just try it sometime. Don't miss service for five straight weeks and see what it does for you. Of course, some of them did it too. Listen. Listen to what the Bible tells us. You know, they always want to check Jesus out, you know. And they asked Jesus one time, Who art thou, Christ? Tell us who you are. I want to tell you who I am. But Jesus said, you know, he could have bragged and said, I'm the son of God, I'm all this. He said, but if I tell you who I am, he said unto them, I'll tell you, you will not believe it. You won't believe who I am. Listen to what he tell us. In Hebrews 3.12, he said, he better let there be any of you of evil heart of unbelief. I'm talking about the one that let us deal with the smell of death. These are people dying and don't even yet while they live. He tells in Hebrews 4 11, he said, Let us labor therefore to enter into the rest. Let any man fall after what? The same example of unbelief. Let we start acting like the world. Listen. Listen to me. He tells us in Titus 2 and 7, he said, He said, All things show thyself a a pattern of good work. Wow! Why are you show the pattern? In doctrine. Showing what? Uncorrupted gravity and sincerity. We got to let it come down from heaven and be serious about what we see from God. The Bible tell us the qualified of man. You know, we got to have some good men around there. A good preacher. He, he, he qualified. He's sincere about what he do. Where are you going? Why y'all put him over me? Okay, uh, that's my brain. Let, let, let's deal with that. The qualified man, he is called a commission and sent by God. Now, that may be the problem, brother. Some of us ain't been sent by God. When you change God's message, God didn't send you. You know, when you, but the qualified man does. You say, watch what the Bible say in Ephesians 5 1. He said, Be ye therefore follow God as dear to it. We got to make sure if we want that, you know, the effect of the gospel, we got to make sure that we following God. Not only in 1 Peter 1 15 and 16, the Bible tell us, He said, But as he which has called you be holy, be ye holy. Well, in all manner, oh, how you talk. How you live? Because it's written, be ye holy for I am holy. We got to be like God and not like Satan. The Bible tells me qualified men live in the sight of God. And that way it said in 17 chapter, in the 17 verse, he says, uh, uh, God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Make sure when you speak, it's in Christ Jesus. God, we qualify in the sight of God. Listen to what the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy uh, 2 and 3. It's, the Bible says, For this is a, a, a good and a separate in the sight of God our Savior, who will help us all men to be saved. God wants you saved. Not only would he want you saved, he said, Come, but you got to do how? How are you going to be saved? Coming to the knowledge of the truth. Oh, the truth is so important. 
It's a life that it, it, it's true of faith. Either you can tell the truth and live forever, or you can lie and die. Oh, I'm getting tired of this. Listen to what the Bible says. Call by me and speak. He, that's why when you get baptized, the first thing, the first thing before they baptize you, and, and they ask about baptism in, 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 in Matthew 28 and 20. He said what? Teach them after your baptism. What do you teach them? To observe all things whatsoever what? Not what the man commanded. What the crowd wanted. What, what the, the dead folk want. Well, let me get out of here. How much time I got? Oh, you let me know the five. But look what the body would tell us. In the, he told us not only that. He told us in 1 Corinthians 9. He said, God is saved by we what? You were called unto the fellowship of his son. That's what we call to. The fellowship. We got fellowship. A sweet savior. Have us fellowship with his son, Christ Jesus and Lord. As we come to a close. I want somebody to wait for me when he give me the buzzer. We're going to end uh, away from me at, at 155, I mean 145, some. And just wait for me at the 18th verse. The Bible tell us, listen, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For the necessity is laid upon me. Yet, word to the who? Me if I preach not. Preachers, if you don't preach the gospel, woe unto you. That's trouble. Why? For I do these things willingly, and I have reward. But if I do against my will, a disposition of the gospel is committed unto me. But even if you do it, and you don't want to do it, and they make it hard on you, God said you still smell like a rose. What's what he's saying, A.T.? What is my reward then? Brother, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ with, with, without charge that I abuse not my power. Where? In the gospel. You're abusing your power in the gospel. Listen, I'm going to give you, what you five minutes. I'm going to give you back two, three of them. Okay, because I'm coming to a close. Thank you, brother. Listen, I, if you want to, the other effect, it's just like the effect it had on Isaiah. In Isaiah 6, in the 8th chapter, he said what? I also heard the voice of the Lord. See, some, some of us need to listen to God. We got to listen to Jesus. He said, I heard the voice of the I Lord saying, the Lord saying, saying what? Whom shall, Whom I, shall I say? No, I'm going on my own. See, that's what a mistake coming. He said, who said I sin? Who, said, who will go for us? Who will go for us? And every preacher need to say this. Ben, I Here I am. am. Here I am. Uh-huh. Here am I. Send me. Uh-oh. Send me. Me. My. Me. God said, send. You know what I mean? I, I, I just said, send me. Every preacher, when you, you need to go for the Lord. Not for the side of the church, not for the church itself, but you are doing the Lord's will. And when we, Jeremiah got in on action, in Jeremiah 20 and 9, the Bible said what? He said, this I say, I will not make what? Mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but the word which is in my heart is what? Burning it's burning in my bones. If you ain't on fire for, oh, I, if you ain't on fire for God, you may be in the wrong business. He said, burn in my heart, what else? And I was weary. He said, I was weary. He said, I was weary. Why? I put forbearance. Forbearance, why? That I could not. I just can't be still. I got to teach God's word. Oh, when you get that. And the final word, the final of the preaching, let us go uh, to uh, uh, 145 and 18. And uh, this is for the preachers only and, and people who are trying to serve the Lord. Watch what he said. The Lord is nigh. He said, the Lord is close. He's right unto there with all you. them. He said, what? The Lord is nigh unto all them uh -huh, read. that call upon him. That call upon him. Read. To all that call upon him Listen, in truth. He, in truth. Now, in truth, if you're going to call me, make sure you're calling me in truth. Thank you.
Thank you. Yes, sir. You did so well, I can't even teach you. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Let us say amen.